My beloved father, Dr. Neil Gerald Aronson, crossed over the Rainbow Bridge, as my dear Ugandan friend and brother, Samson Turanawe, always says. And it was on January 9th of 2024, nine days before his 90th birthday. Now, there's so much I could say about my wonderful dad, about his creative spirit, his generous heart, his love of people, his incredible sense of humor, which was with him until his last breath. I could share about how deeply he inspired me and my sister and our mom, his soulmate of 61 years, and how as a pediatrician, he took care of and entertained thousands of families and kids all around the Chicago area, and how profoundly we will all miss him. But what I would like to do right now is take this opportunity to share some dream arc magic with you. And to just illustrate how when we remain genuinely open in our hearts and in our minds, our loved ones in the spirit world can really reach through the veil to communicate with us. And they can do so through the appearances of animals, uh, the symbols in our dreams, and the love in our communities. And they do it in the, in the most miraculous of ways and exactly when we need it the most. So let me start by sharing how our encounter with the cardinal began, the bird, and a bit of background. I was visiting my parents and my family around the holidays in Chicago. And even though it was supposedly like my vacation time, I was still, of course, engaging in just a few Dreamark and Gene Keys related meetings and communications with my absolutely beloved colleagues. And because I basically just cannot help myself, um, that's what was going on. Anyway, at that time, Richard, Matthew, the DreamArc Squire, and I were in the process of coming up with content for the DreamArc's very new monthly gazelle. It's a newsletter. Uh, so one of the ideas we were getting excited about was the possibility of introducing some new animals. And these would be animals that were not part of the original DreamArc Animal Codex. Now, for those of you who are new to the Dream Arc, in the Dream Arc Codex, written by Richard Rudd, all of the 192 animals are intuitively bundled together into 12 smaller groups or categories. And each category has its own name, like the dreamers, or the lappers, or the warriors, or the tricksters, or the journeyers. You get the idea. So we thought it would be fun to come up with a small group of new animals that could play the role of bridging, bridging two categories together or weaving them together. So for a little while, I've been percolating on this question, like which animal, bird, or creature might be a good one to weave the healers together with the messengers? And the one that kept coming to me was the cardinal. So I did a little bit of research and I learned that the cardinal was known for bringing healing and comfort to those who were grieving. And given all that was happening in our world, the Cardinal felt like just a really powerful bird or vision key, according to the Dream Arc, to introduce to the Dream Arc community and beyond. You know, so many of us all over the world have been grieving and on so many levels for so many good reasons. So I invited Richard, right? I said, hey, Richard, why don't you percolate on this gorgeous red bird and see if you feel any inspiration to do some writing on it to create some guidance from the Cardinal. Now, just a few days after that conversation, my father became quite ill. And just a short while after that, he passed away. My mom, sister, daughter, and I, and everybody who loved my dad, we were just all completely devastated and, and still are <laughs> very raw. Um, but I'll never forget it. I was in my sister's childhood bedroom crying, and then the thought came to me, my God, you know, like I just wish our dad would give us some kind of a sign. I wish he'd show up as a cardinal. Then we'd know for sure that he's okay. And really, I really remember thinking that. And then almost immediately, I regretted having that thought. You know, why set myself up for disappointment, right? We were, we were in the middle of a totally freezing blizzard. And even if there were cardinals living in that part of the country, which I doubted, <laughs> they surely would not come out in such a freezing weather, right? And besides, why did I need to look for external proof of something that I should just know and feel in my own heart, you know, that our dad was still with us and that he will always be, no matter what. So I just kind of let go of that thought. And then two days later, before the funeral, 
The rabbi who was going to be officiating at the funeral came to our house in order to gather information about our dad and prepare something to say. And my mom and my sister and I were sitting around the kitchen table with the rabbi and my mom's sister in Florida and my daughter Maya in Copenhagen joined us on the phone so that they could also participate. And, you know, for some time we were just sharing memory after memory of my dad, just all the things we loved about him, you know, and all the humanity of him. And then all of a sudden my sister stood up and pointed out the kitchen window towards the backyard and she said, hey, what's that? There's a bird out there and it's so red. Of course, I immediately got up and I ran to the window and I looked out, right? And I, I just couldn't believe my eyes because there was a red cardinal in our backyard, just hopping around in the freezing cold, just hanging out for quite some time. And of course, I burst into sobbing and tears and I shared why it meant so much to me and how the cardinal was here to bring a message of healing to those in grief. And nobody at the table had known anything about my previous conversations with Richard and Matthew about the Cardinal or that I had actually like put out a regretted request that my dad show up for us and let us know that he was okay through a Cardinal. So we were all very, very moved. And um, if that was all I had to share with you about in this story, that would be more than enough. Uh, but that was actually just the beginning. So just keep in mind that while my family has certainly thought cardinals were gorgeous birds, none of us really had any special relationship with the cardinal as far as I knew. And until my recent dream art contemplation with Richard and Matthew, I really hadn't even thought about cardinals for years, right? But now it was like this, this imaginal door had opened up in all of our hearts. And as a family, we became cardinal magnets. Now, the first thing we received before the funeral was a beautiful poem about the Cardinal written by Richard. And Richard didn't even know my dad personally, but there were so many parts of his poem that reminded us of our dad. And I'll make sure that it becomes available to you somehow. It was really uncanny. Uh, so we printed out the poem so that our many guests who would be coming through our house throughout the weekend after the funeral could see and read it. And we found just like the perfect place for it on a table created in honor of our dad. Now, during the funeral, the rabbi told the story about how the cardinal showed up at our house when we were sharing about my dad around the kitchen table. So all of the guests, uh, both our friends and family who were able to brave the blizzard and come to the funeral hall, and also all of those who were watching the service through the live stream on their computers, all of them got to hear the story um, of our dad and the Cardinal. So just, just kind of keep that in mind. So while preparing our childhood home for the many guests who'd be visiting for the coming days, we realized that we needed some sort of coaster protector to put under something. So I looked all over the house for something that could be used for that purpose. And then finally, in a room I normally don't go into in some random cabinet, and at the very bottom shelf in the back, I found this stack of old coasters, probably from the 60s or the 50s or something. And uh, guess what image was on the top coaster? It was an image of a cardinal. Like, I'd never seen these coasters before in the house, and I'm sure they've been there forever. Um, so anyway, we put the coaster on the table right next to the candle with my dad. Now, in the Jewish tradition, after a funeral, people do something called sitting shiva which means that the grieving family receives visitors in the home for a certain amount of days. So family and friends come with all kinds of food, uh, ridiculous amounts of pastries and desserts, and of course, lots of love. And we spend time with each other, talking, grieving, laughing, remembering, and eating, of course, which was always my dad's favorite part of sitting Shiva. Um, and then, of course, the hypersensitive, grieving introvert that I am, you know, I would be going back and forth between socializing in the living room and then hiding out and crying um, in the bedroom upstairs. So at one point, as our relatives and friends were kind of streaming in the front door, our cousin Marla Sue spotted me on the staircase on my way down. And she said, you're not going to believe this, but a gorgeous cardinal showed up in my backyard on the same day that you must have been with the rabbi. And she said, oh my God, it was so strange because I never see cardinals and especially not in weather like this. Then we received a beautiful text and an image from another cousin 
who attended the funeral through the live stream from DC. And she also had had an unusual visitation from a cardinal in her backyard right around the time of my dad's death. Then Matthew, the DreamArc squire, started sending the images of gorgeous paintings of cardinals made by our very talented DreamArc community and participants. And then that same weekend, I was standing and talking to my cousin Mark about the caricatures that my dad used to draw of Mark's adult kids, my cousins, who were my dad's patients like decades ago. And so Mark was pretty sure that his wife had found and texted those caricatures, those drawings to him earlier that day, and he really wanted to show them to me. So he got out his phone and started you know, scrolling through a very long text, which included his daughter as well. And then all of a sudden, while he was scrolling, I saw something and I said, hey, wait, can you just scroll back for a second? And right there on his text chain was an image of two cardinals that were sent to him by his daughter. And he, he had no idea why she sent that to him. Must have been a day or two before. Uh, she just sent it to him randomly. Now, my parents have, have a very big community, right? With friends and family all over the country from all stages of their lives. Uh, they had two couple friends who'd been especially dear to them over the years. And our families, we used to go on trips together when all the kids, us kids were young. And the two, uh, the three couples used to go on trips together as well once we all grew up. And for a variety of reasons, these very dear friends were not able to make it to the funeral in person. However, and this is pretty amazing, they still managed to be touched by the cardinal. And what was especially magical was that their cardinal visitations happened before the cardinal was ever mentioned at the funeral, and in one case, even before my dad passed away. So the wife from one of the couples whose husband passed away only months before reached out to us a week or so after the funeral, and she sent us this picture of a pair of pajamas that she had just received as a gift. Her daughter was the one who bought them for her, the very day we saw the cardinal from our kitchen with the rabbi. And of course, the PJs were totally full of cardinals. Now, around that very same time, I received a season's greeting card from the other couple. And that card was of a male and female cardinal sitting side by side in the snow. And I didn't even know about the card until I came back from Chicago and returned to Santa Fe in mid-January, just weeks later and went through my mail. And then holding it in my hand, I, I just immediately reached out to these dear family friends and I asked them like, how could this have happened? And I was actually thinking at the time, I wonder if they like saw the funeral first when the rabbi shared about the story with the cardinal and then they sent me the card. But then I glanced at the back of the card and I realized that it was dated December 23rd. So they actually sent the card before my dad had passed away. So in a text exchange with the family friends, this is what the wife wrote. I chose the cardinal card for you because years ago when we were visiting you, there was a cardinal hopping around in your backyard and we watched and enjoyed it for a long time from your kitchen. Then after I sent the card and during the funeral service, I heard about the cardinal showing up outside your window and I had to wonder. I have experienced many true stories like this that are coincidences that happen around the time people pass. Sometime I'd like to share the other stories with you. It just went on and on. Even today, I was in the Gene Keys meeting with a group of my colleagues. And while the meeting was happening, my dear colleague Danny looked out her window and saw like five or six cardinals just flying and hopping about. I even got her to take some pictures of them for me. And since I'm talking about dream art magic, I have to at least mention the realm of dreaming. You know, though my dad rarely remembered his dreams, he was a very big dreamer. He'd never say he was, but he totally was. And his dreams were so active that his body would actually move while he was sleeping. So for example, like once he was dreaming that he was playing basketball and while he was in the process of kind of making a slam dunk, he literally hurled his body off of the bed and onto the floor while he was sleeping. That's, that's my dad. During his last days, he was dreaming with his eyes open. It would go on for hours at a time. His eyes would kind of be scanning the room and sometimes he would smile and laugh and sometimes he would be kind of conducting music with his hands and sometimes he'd get upset about something. 
And once he was looking at the walls of the hospital room in astonished amusement, and we asked him what he was seeing, and it took a lot of energy for him to be able to articulate it, but he finally said that he was seeing drawings made by many of his patients, drawings of kids by kids all over the walls. You know, there were really moments when it really felt like he was experiencing his life review right there in front of us. So when preparing for the visit to Chicago, which was supposed to be to celebrate the holidays and our dad's 90th birthday, my sister Marilee had bought him a gift of a sweet, angelic, childlike being kind of flying on a bird. And her card was addressed to, Dad, our favorite, playful, living, hilarious dreamer. After our father died, our aunt dreamed that she and our dad, her beloved brother-in-law, traveled to another planet similar to many of the adventures they'd had in the 61 years that they'd known each other. She actually saw him before my mom saw him and thought it was quite cute. <laughs> and then I had a dream where I was standing on a cliff overlooking this valley full of all kinds of animals. And then this enormous flock of cardinals flew over my head. There must have been hundreds of them. And then a dear Danish friend of mine, Melina, who some of you may recognize if you took the DreamArc online course, had a powerful dream about my dad, which was crazy, where he sat down in front of her and they looked in each other's eyes and he said, I will always be here, we never die. And then the next day, a beautiful red bird, not a cardinal, but a red bird, showed up in her backyard and it really felt like it was communing with her. And even though it wasn't a cardinal, it was red and it made a huge impression on her and she had to tell me about it. And this was before the funeral, so she didn't even know about the Cardinal. And here's another fresh dream scoop, fresh off the press from Richard Rudd, who just told me that he had a dream of a Cardinal, actually an enormous Cardinal that somehow was in his living room and he had no idea how it got in there. And just the color red ended up taking on extra meaning as well, which is why I'm wearing red right now. <laughs> You know, the spectacular red roses that we received from our Gene Keys family, the favorite red ski sweater that we dressed our father's body in, and that was amazingly mentioned in a psychic reading that my husband, husband Kim, gave us in the days leading up to the funeral, the red chairs at the funeral hall, the red shirts and jackets that my mom and dad used to wear all of the time without my even realizing it. I was just looking at all these pictures because I was making the the video, the slideshow for the funeral. And I'm like, oh my God, they wore red all the time. The red books that my sister Marilyn and her boyfriend serendipitously gifted each other over the holidays. The red gloves that my sister bought for her niece, my daughter Maya. The red shirts that Sally and Richard wore during the first meeting we had after my father passed away. I wish I took a picture of that. So that's one of the things that I've learned through this experience so far that what matters is not how many synchronicities we experience. It doesn't even matter if any of the specifics of our seemingly magical experiences are, are factually true or totally specific, right? What matters more than those things is the state of the heart. How can we keep it open, resilient, and willing to receive grace whenever or however grace appears? What also matters is the state of the mind. How can we keep our minds playful, flexible, and imaginative? How can we notice and cherish synchronicities when they do come, yet hold them lightly without clinging? How can we let moments of magic gently lift our spirits and strengthen our trust in life while reminding ourselves that the dream weaver spider is always there, always weaving her compassionate web, whether we see it or not? We don't need any proof, actually. It's nice when it happens, but we don't need it. Another thing I learned is that spirit communicates to us in all kinds of ways. It is boundless. It can communicate to us from anywhere. It's timeless. It can communicate to us from the past or from the future. It speaks to us through the dream time. It speaks to us through our friends and our family and our colleagues and our communities. It speaks to us through the weather through colors, through the songs playing on the radio, and it's felt throughout the collective. So even if none of the cardinal visitations that I've described here had anything to do with my father, we each still have the opportunity to be transformed by this story and what I've made of it. 
we can all experience the cardinal as an archetypal being, as a messenger of healing, as a visionary bird bringing comfort to those who are grieving. Even if you've never before even thought of the cardinal, right? I bet that now, if you've managed to get this far in the entire video, then the cardinal will begin to live inside of you and perhaps communicate with you in some way that it had not done before. And this is because my imaginative and mystical and heartful experience is now touching yours, right? This is the dream arc. We're now being woven together in a cardinal dream. And my story is a part of yours and yours is going to be part of mine. This is the great dream weaver spider in action. Whether we know it or not, whether we're open to it or not, she is constantly spinning an invisible, connective, and magical web within us and between us, reminding us that we are the dreamers, we are the dreamed, and the dream itself, all at the same time, in this realm and all the realms. My intention here is mostly just to show just one example, to share just one story of how not only the cardinal, but the whole imaginal spirit of the dream arc can bring us comfort, magic, and hope during times of grief when we stay open to it. And we are truly living at a time when so many of us are experiencing loss and grief. Many of us, in fact, are overwhelmed with grief as it seems so many people around the world, so much of what we've known to be true or reliable or solid or safe, all of it seems to be coming to an end. So I just want to acknowledge as a human being who's had a bit of a rough year and a half, I'll tell you, that sometimes, even for the most high frequency and life-loving people, it can be really, really challenging to feel hope on the horizon, to see through the seeming finality of, of death, through illusion upon illusion of separation, through the divisions and the brokenness and the wars and the suffering taking place all over the planet, trauma after trauma after trauma. In my humble opinion, we humans can use all the help we can get to see and feel the beautiful possibilities, the magical inevitabilities, the birth and renewal that await us on the other side of death, of endings, of seeming loss. And I have to say, I have heard so many amazing stories like the one I'm telling you here, stories of sacred synchronicity from people in our Dream Art community ever since the Dream Art course was first, first launched. And I bet some of you watching this video right now have the most wonderful and uplifting stories of your own, which I am looking so much forward to hearing. So we really invite you to start thinking of ways to share your stories with others with our Dream Art community. We need these stories, stories of magic, of hope, of playfulness and light and love in the midst of all the darkness. These are the true gifts of the Dream Art. So thank you for listening. Love you, Dad.